Hello everybody, my name is Finch and this is episode one of the Dota Clinic. Today we're going to be talking about goal creation and why goals are important and all of the things that you need to know when you you know, begin to look at setting goals for yourself moving forward. Now this topic is probably the building block of a lot of the things that I'm going to be talking about throughout this series. And more importantly, I feel that goal creation should be just a standard of everybody's life. Everybody has goals. Everybody makes, you know, whether it's school or work or Dota or sports, whatever it is, everybody has created goals. But a lot of times people don't write down these goals. They don't think about these goals. They don't think about the process that goes into achieving these goals. So a lot of the time people think, oh, you know, creating goals is not that big of a deal. Uh, I don't worry about it. If you don't set goals, you can't be disappointed if you don't achieve them, that kind of stuff. And I'm here today to tell you all that stuff is a lie. Goals are super important and you really need to kind of think about them and think about the process and more importantly, write them down. If you write them down, you're gonna have a lot more success just because you're able to see what your goals are and uh, you know, kind of how that whole process works. So the reason I wanted to start with this one is because you can't start worrying about things like anxiety, things like motivation, things like teamwork, competitiveness, uh, wins and losses, getting better, all the things that go into a competitive environment, um, especially in like, you know, Dota, StarCraft, competitive sports, whatever it may be. If you don't have goals or aspirations to reach a certain level of play or to win or lose or, you know, whatever it may be, then you're not really going to be worrying about things like anxiety because if you're just playing to have fun, you're not going to worry about that. You shouldn't be getting stressed out. Um, so with goal creation is you want to sit down and kind of just figure out what the game plan is. And then as you move forward, you begin to work in other topics and other issues and other, you know, just whatever it may be to, you know, kind of achieve your goals. And so today we're going to start with a good quote um, that I like. It's from Lou Holtz. If you don't follow sports, look him up. He's a uh, legendary football coach. He says, if you're bored with life, you don't get up every morning with a burning desire to do things. You don't have enough goals. And, uh, you know, Lou Holtz was one of the probably the most successful football coaches of all time in college football. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. So if he says goals are good, goals are good. Uh, so let's just dive in right away. So there's going to be three parts to a goal. Um, you're going to be getting your outcome goal, performance goal, and your process goals. And I guess real quick, uh, you see the format. I have the, uh, the text document and uh, just kind of stuff I typed out. Uh, rather than doing a PowerPoint or typing it as we go, I just figured just I'll type it up beforehand. We'll scroll through it. The goal of these series is to kind of go through as quick as possible, but at least get the point across. And then if you guys have feedback and uh, questions anything like that, just let me know. Uh, I'm totally fine with changing the format and whatever it may be. Uh, a lot of the time I just felt like it was just me talking. You can't really see anything and it just a lot of it was lost and it just turned into this kind of a lecture type thing. So we're going to start today with the text document. We'll just roll it and see how it goes. But let's look at goals. So these are going to be your three types of goals and each of them have a place and they have a role to play and whatever it may be. Um, so right now we have these goals at the end. We'll talk about kind of tailoring this to Dota and some examples and things that you can do. Um, but the biggest one, the first one you're going to set is going to be your outcome goal. Your outcome goal is your outcome. It's the your end game. It's your big plan. It's the outline. Whatever you're trying to achieve at the end. Now this can be anything. That's the one I say in the goal creation is this is not Dota specific. This isn't game specific or sports specific. This is just life. Things that you do every day in life and you you know whatever it may be. So your outcome goal could be something like get a new job, uh, make a certain salary. Uh, you know, get better at Dota, reach a certain MMR, uh, what, you know, whatever it may be, your outcome goal is going to be the thing you're trying to achieve, the thing at that top of that list, things that you're going to use the process goals and the performance goals to try to reach that outcome goal. Now you're going to set this one first because whatever this goal may be, it's going to dictate your performance goals and your process goals. So the next one up is going to be your performance goals. Now performance goals are personal standards that monitor the achievement of your process goals. And so that kind of sounds a little bit weird, um, but, but trust me, this all makes sense and it's very easy. So performance goals are things that you can track and are things that are under your control and they're leading up to your outcome goal. So for our example today, we're talking about Dota MMR and uh, I think the number I put was 4,500. Uh, performance goals are things that, are, that you can control like buying wards every six minutes like 
building a mechanism or a support item for your team, that's under your control. Your teammates do not affect your ability to do that sort of stuff. Unless they do it beforehand, you know, then that's great. Your team has it. You can just do something else to help your team. But performance goals are things that are within your control, things that you can measure and you can accomplish without having to worry about influence of other people. So another example, I guess, to kind of take this out of Dota would be something like, say, running. So your say your outcome goal is to run a marathon, all right? That's a pretty good achievement. People like to work towards that. Your performance goal is going to be maybe run five miles under a certain amount of time. And you can track that. You can know if you do that or not. And it, it's under your control. You're not relying on somebody else or some influences outside of your control to reach that goal. Um, and so it'll make sense here. So the next one up is going to be process goals. Process goals are just the tiny, tiny steps that you can do to help reach your performance goals, which is going to help you reach your outcome goal. So I guess that's another good way to think of it is you have your outcome goal here at the top. You have your performance goals here in the middle. You're going to have a couple of those. And then your process goals are going to be things that help you reach your performance goals. So think of it kind of as a hierarchy. You start with a really big one. You break it down into two or three break those two or three down into you know six or ten whatever it may be and this kind of gives you an outline of ideas and processes and steps that you're going to be taking to complete this big overarching outcome goal because what happens with a lot of people is they create a goal and either the goal is going to be too big it's something that is unattainable something that's kind of really far out there um, something that you know you're not going to achieve in any reasonable amount of time and if you set that goal you're going to get discouraged, you're going to lose interest, you're going to think it's too far off, and then you're going to give up and move on. Same thing if you set a goal that's too small, too easy to achieve, you're just going to complete it and not worry about it. You're not going to think about kind of the, the whole process of, you know, powering through it and getting better and moving forward and things of the sort. So how we get around this, um, you know, trying to find goals that are good middle ground is by using um, a pretty good... Uh, format and that is going to be SMART, it's a uh, acronym, so SMART goals uh, are things that you want to think about when you're creating these goals and they want to you know, pertain to especially the outcome goal and especially the performance goal. Um, the process goals are things that you might not be able to measure, it might be like you know, spending a certain amount of time or um, you know, whatever it may be. Those are not necessarily going to follow the SMART format but the other goals are for sure and it's just good to keep in the back of your mind when you're setting these goals because a lot of times I'll work with clients who set goals that are just not really good because you you don't know they might say something like get a better job well how do you what does get a better job mean does that mean getting a higher salary does it mean having a job that you enjoy does it mean having a job that gives you personal satisfaction all those things could be getting a better job but why do you want to get the better job? How do you know when you reach that point of a better job? And so those are where you get the SMART goals and they come in. So you got S stands for specific. Now these are just, you know, as specific as possible, straight to the point, so there's no confusion on the goal. Next one is measurable. There should be some way to measure how you're doing with your progress. You know, everything needs to be objective. It doesn't need to be subjective. And, you know, you don't need to sit down and go, hmm, did I complete that? I don't know. Somebody else should be able to look at your data and say, yes, you completed it. No, you didn't complete it. Next one is going to be attainable, things that are realistic, things that you can complete in a certain amount of time frame that, you know, you're not going to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go to Mars today. Well, I'm, I'm probably not going to go to Mars today. That's not attainable. I'm not going to do that. So that is a bad goal. Next one up is going to be relevant. Make sure you stay on topic. It needs to kind of all come back to your outcome goal, whatever it may be. So for right now, we're going to talk about Dota today. We're going to be creating goals for Dota and kind of how that process works. You don't need to throw in a goal about, you know, making better life decisions. That, you know, that doesn't matter. You know, I guess and you can make an argument saying the way you, you know, work out and eat and things like that is going to affect your Dota play. But you're not going to create a goal to get better at Dota and then say, I'm going to swim five laps every day. It's like, well... Where does that come in? If you want to become a better swimmer, that's a great goal. If you want to become a better Dota player, there's plenty of other things that you could do to make yourself better at playing Dota. The last one is time. Um, you can also use trackable. Uh, most of this is just to kind of find that happy medium of things that aren't too long, things that are not too short, but kind of right there in the middle where you know you can kind of work towards achieving them 
and things like that. So smart goals, keep in the back of your mind when we talk about this. And uh, you know, now uh, hopefully this format that I'm talking about in this example gives you guys a good idea on uh, what you need to do. So we'll scroll down here to um, our example for today. So the, the outcome goal that we have, I just put reach 44 or 4,500 MMR as a support player. Now this meets all of our SMART criteria. It is specific, yes, 4,500 MMR, that is a number, it is there. As a support player, even better. There's no question if we're playing carries, if we're playing mid every game, whatever it may be, this is our criteria, we're sticking to it. Is it attainable? Yeah, I'd say, you know, right now, currently with the state of the Dota 2 ranked ladder, 4,500 is not the tip top, it's not the bottom of the barrel. It's kind of right in the middle. It's a good place to where people feel competent and, a, you know, a good sweet spot. Um, then at the same time, it kind of depends on your personal achievements. And so say, you know, your current rating right now is 4,000. 4,500 is a great goal. 500 points over a certain amount of time is very realistic uh, just because, you you know, it might take you like a month or so. So you want to create that goal to help you get to that point. If, say right now, your MMR is 3,000, don't set a 4,500 MMR goal. That is, you know, going up that many points in a certain amount of time is going to take you forever. Don't do that. So say right now you're at 3,000, just change this to 3,500. Um, you're going to want to tailor it to whatever thing that you need to do for yourself and make it you know personal to you make it achievable things all that sort and everybody is going to be on a different level you, you can't look at your neighbor or you know a friend or whatever it may be and say well you know what he's at 5,000 I'm at 3,000 I need to get to 5,000 well you know what you might be in a different place than he is so you need to focus on yourself you need to work on things that are achievable for yourself things that are under your control. Don't worry about other people. Worry about yourself and achieving your personal goals and reaching a point to where, you know, where you're trying to get pretty much. And with these outcome goals, this isn't something that is kind of, you're going to set one and then you're done, you know, just one and done type thing. You're going to say right now you're at 3000, you set a 3500 MMR, you complete this goal, you go, Hey, this process works. I'm going to, you know, do it again. We're going to try to reach 4,000. And you just readjust your goals, refix whatever you need to fix. You can set your outcome goal a little bit higher. And that gives you that sense of progress. You're moving forward. And by writing it down, you know what you're trying to achieve. There's no question of, did I get my goal? Did I achieve my goal? Did I fail? Whatever it may be, there's always progress. And you can see that progress on paper. And a lot of that, you know, helps you mentally stay focused and stay on task and continue to move forward with whatever goal you're setting. So right now, we'll, uh, you know, it's 3,500 MMR as a support player, fine. That is a good goal. Once again, do whatever you have to do. That is your outcome goal. That is the, the end all be all that we're trying to reach. The performance goals and our process goals are going to be leading our path. Those are our steps that we're taking to reach that outcome goal. And so next one up is going to be performance goals. Now, we are focusing on being a support player. If you want to focus on playing carry, you want to focus on playing off lane, whatever it may be, you could even, you know, just say reach a certain number and not worry about a specific. The reason I put support player is it just allows the process of creating the performance goals and process goals to be a little bit easier because it focuses it down. It keeps it very specific on a specific topic and you know how to get there and how to reach it. So the first goal that I have, um, if I was trying to reach, you know, 3,500 or 4,500, whatever it may be, um, doesn't matter. And, uh, you know, whatever you're trying, number you're trying to get to, performance goal. First one is make sure you have ward coverage on at least one rune throughout the first 24 minutes of each game. Now, this seems kind of weird, but it is measurable. Yes, I can watch the replay and I can see if I could see a rune for the minute zero to minute 24. Is it specific? Yeah, there's no question. You want to you want an observer ward on a room. No question. Is it achievable? Yeah, you can do that. Wards last six minutes. Just continuously buy them for those six minute intervals until the 24 minute mark. Is it, you know, can you achieve it in a certain amount of time? Yeah, you could do this in one game of Dota. Perfect. That fits your smart criteria. It is easy to track if you do it. It's a simple yes, I did it or no, I did not do it. Simple, easy, straight to the point. Next one, performance goal. 
Number two, build items that support your team. Things like mechanism, pipe, drums, things that are going to help your team win the game. You don't need to play Vengeful Spirit and say, I'm a support, and then build a Desolator. That's not helping your team. That's helping yourself. You know, Maybe you could argue that you know the negative armor helps, but then just build a medallion. That might help your team. There's, there's other things that you can be doing that help your team more than building a Desolator on Vengeful Spirit because if you're playing the support role, you want to support your teammates. So this is, once again, it's specific. I even listed three support items that are worth building pretty much every game. Someone's going to get them sooner or later. It is measurable. Watch the replay. Did you build one of these items? Yes or no? Very, very easy. I think you get the picture. Um, and the third one is a, you know, a little bit different than those, um, but it's keep your deaths fewer than your kills plus your assists. Um, this one's more of just dying less, so you're helping your team and not negatively helping your team. You're not giving the enemy kills and things of the sort. A lot of times people are playing supports, they go out to go ward and they just wander out there by themselves and they get killed. Or they'll go you know, ward the enemy jungle and they'll just trek across the river by themselves and they'll die. And then they'll say, oh I was trying to ward. Well, you didn't really need to be out there by yourself to plop that ward down. You know, Wait until you have some teammates around you to fight with your team, be a part of your team. Um, so that's kind of why this goal is, uh, I like it for me personally because it is specific, it is measurable, it's attainable, all those things on that smart criteria. You can see, you can look at your replay and you can quickly see, are my kills and my assists higher than my death rate? If you died 15 times and have one kill and five assists, you are doing something wrong. You weren't helping your team, you were dying way too much. Now there's always going to be outlier variables. Things where your just team just got stomped and you didn't have any kind of control and you just died a whole lot because the rest of your team died a whole lot. That's okay. That's going to happen. This is not something that's going to be 100% work every game. You want it to be maybe 80% though of every game for this stuff to be true because a lot of the times it is, it is under your control. You're not necessarily going to just die a whole bunch but the rest of your team do really good. You know, There'll be fights where you die first because you have the lowest health. But that's not going to be every fight. You're still going to get the assists and things like that. Um, so the kill plus assist is just kind of a measurement. It's just a variable to see, hey, you know what? I did do a good job this game. I had two kills. I had six assists, but I had four deaths. So I had eight total bonus points, four deaths. Eight is bigger than four. Therefore, I did what I needed to do. Um, so those are the performance goals. All those are measurable within the game. They're all under your control personally. No one dictates if you buy the wards or not other than yourself. Same thing for mechanism. You dictate if you want to buy a mechanism or not. It doesn't matter what your teammates are doing. It's your choice to build that certain item that's going to help the team. Now you're looking at the process goals. These are the smallest goals that are going to help you reach your performance goals. And if you want, if it's a better format for you, what you could do is you could kind of write a um, like almost a tree type format to where you have um, performance or the outcome goal on top and then have it branch out into two and do performance goal performance goal and then break those performance goals out into three into three process goals for each performance goal so if you find that format to be better for you and easier to see then do that go ahead um, for me I just type it out this way because it was easier and uh, I wanted to get all the information out there as quick as possible and uh, process goals so these are goals that are going to support your performance goals which support your outcome goals so the first one we're going to be doing for the process goals is play at least one game of dota every day that is specific that is attainable that is reliable the whole smart category it is under your control it doesn't matter what your teammates are doing you decide if you want to play that one game of dota or not now there's going to be days where you're not going to be able to do this maybe you know you're just really busy with work and you can't play one that's okay it is you know you don't need to have 100% Maybe you could even like tailor it to play at least five games of Dota a week, something like that. Uh, something that tailors to your specific needs and how your lifestyle is and how it works. Uh, number two, pick a good support hero for the role. Now, this one I put because, um, you know, pick what your team needs. If your team, you know, needs a lich support because you're gonna be playing a little bit more defensively, and you know you want to kind of sit with whoever you're with and keep the lane closer to your tower if you know you have like a specter or a faceless void in your team then yeah pick that hero if your team wants to be a little bit more aggressive and you're maybe ganking a lot more you know pick something like crystal maiden because that is the role that you needed 
that is uh, something that you can control because you can look at your team roster and say which support would be the best in this situation. You don't need to, you know, get into the idea of like, well, technically you can play a Spirit Breaker support, but it's like you're not going to do that every game. Or like Morana support. Sometimes it's really good. More often than not, you're not going to play Morana that way. So goal number two, the process goals, is just kind of figure out what jives with your team and play that hero um, and kind of, you know, focus down your hero pools at heroes that are going to be helping benefit your team. Number three, start by buying the first set of wards every game. This is really easy. You start the game, you load in, you click the ward button. That's it. You're done. You achieved your process goal. Now this goal is going to directly support the idea of make sure you have ward coverage on at least one rune throughout 24 minutes of each game. You buy a ward right away, you're already on that track to achieving that goal. Now, if your teammate buys it, great. They can place it. That is still going to help you reach your criteria for the goal. If nobody else is, though, take it upon yourself to purchase the ward because that is going to help your middle hero You know, at least keep an eye on the runes. That's why I put at least one rune. It's because then at least they know where the rune's spawning. Um, a lot of times, if you say both runes, it gets a little tricky, or if it's in their jungle and my rune, then that gets a little tricky as well. But just one rune is simple, it's specific, it's easy to do, it's attainable, all things of the sort. So that is uh, number three. Number four is talk with your team right away to get an idea of which support item you will be building first. This is just a simple, hey guys, should I build mechanism? Hey guys, should I go pipe? Whatever it may be, check around with your teammates. Make sure you're building the right item. More often than not, it is a bad idea to have two mechanisms. So if you see someone on your team building a mechanism, well, you need to plan that out ahead of time so you can adjust and maybe you know turn that headdress into a pipe of insight. Same thing with drums. You don't really need two of them. If you have someone on your team like Luna who's building drums already, don't go, I'm going to build the drums. No, let her build the drums. You build a mechanism. It, it's simple. Just talking with your team. It's specific. It's easy. You can check if you asked yes or no, no questions about this goal, if you can do it or not. Um, number five, this uh, comes back to the uh, number three performance goal, which was keep your deaths fewer than your kills plus assists. That is, do not go out on your own, stick with your teammates to avoid meaning, meaning deaths, meaningless deaths. Now this is just what I talked about, don't go wandering to go ward or rune, stick with your teammates, get someone to go with you. Make sure you know the enemy team is on the other side of the map when you go into the jungle. Things like that, that you can kind of go under your control. By doing this, you're going to die less, which is going to help you keep your kills and your assists above that threshold that you want to keep it at. And the last one, maintain good ward coverage through the whole game to give your team enough sight to pick good engagements. Now, it's the same thing. It goes right back to number three and even number one. It kind of goes into both of your performance goals. It is on yourself to make sure you have good ward coverage. You're not saying, make sure your teammates purchase enough wards to have good ward coverage. No, it's on you. You need to purchase the wards to have enough good ward coverage to help your team survive and help them do these fights and things of like that. Um, and that is our last goal for the process goals. Now, as you can see, I hope this makes a little bit more sense. All six of these process goals are going to help you achieve your one, two, three performance goals. Playing one game of Dota can kind of make all of these things better. Picking good support heroes is going to make all these more achievable. Um, and then the rest of these as well, they kind of all directly tie into those performance goals. And ideally, if you're able to complete all three of these performance goals at an 80% or better criteria, you're going to reach your goal, whatever it may be. So it might be 4,500 MMR, it might be 3,500 MMR, it might be whatever. doesn't matter what it is. Now, you don't need to make three. I did three because it's a nice number. It's easy. You can do five. You can make, you know, 40 process goals, whatever it may be, however you feel that you need to break it out into a criteria in which you can write down what you want to do and also monitor how your achievement is going, then do whatever you have to do. It's not that big of a deal. But keep these three types of goals in mind because performance goals are things that you're going to be tracking that you can see if you met that criteria. Once again, like the running thing I was talking about. Outcome goal, run a marathon. Performance goal, be able to run at least five miles in a certain amount of time. Um, process goals, I'm going to run every day. 
by running every day, you're going to be able to run at least the five miles. By running those five miles in a certain amount of time, you're going to reach the marathon. Simple, easy, boom, 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 one, two, three, and uh, you're going to be able to achieve the goals that you set for yourself and you create. Now, like I was saying earlier, these aren't things that are Dota specific. The show is focused on Dota and raising your Dota rating or skill, whatever it may be. You're going to start at the bottom and you're going to move your way up and you're going to progress forward. And that's how this goal, this series wants you to kind of think about these things. You can take this and you can apply it to other games, something like StarCraft, totally fine. Apply it to your life, apply it to your school, whatever it may be. A lot of this goal creation process can reach into all those areas of your life. And so it's good to be aware of you know how to do it, what they mean, write them down more importantly so you know what you're doing and how you're getting there and it's going to carry over to all that kind of stuff so it's very important and I hope you guys kind of understand it like I was saying um, I know it kind of at first it seems a little bit confusing but hopefully once you see the example it makes a little bit more sense on what I'm talking about and why it's important and uh, so this wraps up episode one of the Dota Clinic if you guys have questions comments or feedback please, please, please let me know. Um, if you need help creating goals or you have questions on is this a goal that can fit in this criteria and all that kind of stuff, just feel free to reach out to me. I will help you. Uh, I work with plenty of clients on creating goals every day. If it's ranging from just life stuff or if it's in sport, whatever it may be, this stuff is kind of the building block. And once you have this outline, then you can begin to figure out where you're trying to get and you can begin working on things like identifying where your motivation lies, things like reducing your anxiety. There's all sorts of things that go into your life and reaching these goals that are going to help support the goals. But at the end of the day, the goals are the building blocks to know what you're doing to reach that point. So try to do this first, and uh, hopefully this is helpful for you guys. You guys can find me on Twitter, at Indy Finch. I'll put a link to it in the comments on this video, and you guys can reach out to me if you need some help. And uh, I'm always available. If you have any questions with anything, please feel free to let me know. If you like this format or dislike this format, once again, please let me know as well. I'll do my best to change it. Um, like I said in episode zero, we're going to do something like this for episodes maybe one through four, one through five, and then we're going to open up Dota and go into Dota, and we're going to be looking at the heroes, at the gameplay, at replays, whatever it may be within Dota. We're going to apply the things that I talked about in these first chunk of episodes. We're going to apply those things into Dota, and we're going to have more Dota clips and relate it back to Dota and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'll be back next time with episode two. Currently, the game plan is to do episode two on motivation and kind of identifying your motivation on why you're playing Dota or why whatever you're trying to do at the time. Um, identifying that motivation and by identifying where it lies it makes it valuable to yourself because you can adjust your mindset to either keep you moving forward or whatever it may be. Once you kind of realize why you're motivated to do something, it kind of affects the way you approach things and the way you know you succeed or fail, whatever it may be. So that will be episode two. Today was goal creation. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care. We'll see you next time.